Hi everyone, my name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy and um, I felt compelled to come on and make this video for you guys because um, Cassidy from Undead Hardware was incredibly brave to come on camera and tell her story of what happened between her and Dixie Bell Paint and in hearing her story I recognized so many similarities to what happened to me and other brand ambassadors and I wanted to come on and tell my story um, so that it could be heard. And I hope this will encourage more people to come out and tell their story. You guys have told me so many stories behind the scenes. I know there are so many artists and retailers like me. Um, and I hope this will empower you to make you feel like you can come out and tell uh, your similar story, what's happened to you in this company. Um, and so we can get this out in the open and hopefully make this not a factor in our industry, almost a Me Too movement for the paint industry. Um, and so with that, I'd like to take a minute to tell you guys my story. Um, some of you guys might have already heard this. If I look tired, it's because it's been a long few days. Um, but my story starts back in 2017 and I was, um, I'd been painting for about a couple of years and, um, I was fairly new business, um, pretty naive. And I, um, was invited to become a brand ambassador with Dixie Bell Paint Company. Uh, they were also a really young company. They were only a couple of years old, uh, working out of a strip mall. It was just a very small company. And um, and we worked together for those first few years to grow the brand ambassador team. It was a very collaborative relationship. I had a lot of input. Um, we grew the brand ambassador team together, which meant bringing people, new people onto that team and growing it. Um, and they saw incredible growth in their company. And um, I started to notice things changing and about a year to a year and a half before I left is probably when I would say um, that I noticed things began to change. If I had to pinpoint a point of time, I would say it was about when brand ambassadors were required to become exclusive to the company and we were no longer allowed to use any other product lines. And with that, it felt less like a mutual relationship to businesses working together and more like we were we were owned. Um, the communication structure was breaking down. There was more decisions being made that I couldn't understand and didn't agree with. Um, there was less room for input. It just was a very, very different environment. And so the story that I'm going to tell is, is what happened that ended my relationship with them, but it's not a singular event. It's the straw that broke the camel's back in a, in a long series of occurrences that were going on behind the scenes. Um, and so what, what happened was in about September of 2021, the brand ambassador team started to notice that our affiliate links were not performing as usual. So an affiliate link is a link when you make a purchase, um, the person who is uh, the brand ambassador who had that link would earn a percentage of that sale. So it's a commission based structure. Um, the consumer pays the same price, but Dixie Bell would pay us a commission on those sales and they were being tracked through that affiliate link. Um, so we started noticing that our incomes had dropped significantly and um, we suspected that there was something going on with the affiliate links. I had been the longest tenured brand ambassador. I was the um, highest performing brand ambassador. So I had extensive data for my affiliate link from a long history of using it that showed me that this was more outside of a normal market fluctuation. Um, so we waited another month and our incomes dropped about another 50%. So at this point, we are looking at about 75% drops in our income. And we start looking into the affiliate links and through research and test transactions, we learn that they in fact are not tracking accurately. Um, so at this point, we've got about two to three months that we have not been paid um, for a variety of transactions and that our links, which are how we are supposed to be compensated in our contract are not functional. Um, this raised some huge concerns for me because at the same time, the brand ambassadors had been working on a transfer release behind the scenes. And what that means is that we had designed and worked on um, a variety of transfer designs um, that were supposed to come out that were going to have our name on them and that were the product of months of our work. Um, and so um, I knew that the compensation structure for those transfers was also tied to those affiliate links and without functional links, there was no way to compensate the brand ambassadors for their work on those transfers. Um, at that time, I communicated to our chief marketing officer that I was extremely concerned that if we didn't figure something out with the links, it was also going to impact the transfer release coming out and um, the brand ambassadors would not be able to be compensated for those. The response I got to that message was, don't worry, we're going to take care of it. 
don't worry. So I had to trust and give faith behind the scenes that something would be fixed to remedy this and both to pay us our regular, um, uh, our regular earnings for our regular brand ambassador work and then also for that transfer release that was upcoming. Um, at the same time, the brand ambassadors had been working on a calendar for the transfer release. So we had a week of promotions that was um, that we had negotiated. That would be the brand ambassadors promoting these transfers, putting them out there with our names on them. And um, we would create a variety of content. I had made a calendar that showed what this uh, release would look like, the content that would be coming out with it every day. And we had already worked together as a team to create all of this content. Um, that had been approved by Dixie Bell. They had seen the calendar. They had seen samples of the content. So they knew exactly what was coming and what was planned for this transfer release. Um, after I sent that message to the chief marketing officer, I waited a few more days and I sent an email to the company. And in that email, I proposed some solutions. Um, and some of those solutions were that we could pay averages. In the meantime, while our links weren't functioning, we could look at paying a royalty on the transfers, which is a percentage of sales. Um, we could look at um, implementing an internal tracking structure versus the third party tracking that we were using at the time. So I sent that email with solutions proposed. I never got any response. Um, any attempts to negotiate, to work something out, to find a solution came from me, but never received a response from Dixie Bell. Um, after that, we got a message from the marketing manager that the transfers would be released to the public the next day. And we were undeniably shocked because this was in violation of the release schedule that we had prepared. Um, and the agreement we had made about the release of these transfers. And this was significant to the brand ambassadors. Um, so everybody was very upset because in addition to this, we had also not been getting our regular earnings for several months now. And now we also weren't going to earn on the transfers that we had been working on. Um, the transfers did go public. When they went public, they were missing any reference to the brand ambassadors on the marketing materials. We were not tagged in any of the posts. Um, and they were using some of the content that we had submitted to be part of our release schedule that was planned for this release. So everybody was noticeably upset. That next morning they requested a call with the brand ambassadors. We get on that call and we're immediately told we're not going to discuss the um, affiliate links. My response to that was to say, you're taking thousands of dollars out of our pockets. I was immediately disconnected from that call and kicked out of that group call. Um, after that, I, um, I knew that it was time to end my relationship with them and that there wasn't going to be a resolution to this situation. Um, and so I made one last Hail Mary effort and I had a long phone conversation with the marketing manager. She apologized to me profusely, um, knowing that the terms of our agreements were being violated, but there was nothing that she could do. And so I submitted my notice in writing. Um, immediately after submitting my notice in writing, Dixie Bell disconnected my affiliate link, which meant that I could not, no longer earn, um, and they kicked me out of their accounts. And what that meant was that I couldn't perform the end of my contract, even though I had given notice. So I contacted them to let me know that was a violation of my contract also. Um, in response, I got a request to have a call with them the next day. That next day we had a call with the owner and the chief marketing officer. Um, I had also made a public post notifying the public that I was severing my relationship with Dixie Bell. Um, their request on that call was that I remove that public post and issue a pre-written statement that they had given, um, and they offered me a sum of money to do so. Um, my response to that was that the statement was inaccurate, it was false, it was not what happened, and I couldn't say that, and I declined the sum of money. It was a five-figure sum of money, so it was significant. Um, after that, they immediately hung up the phone on me and um, severed my notice with the company. So after that, um, I um, moved on fairly quietly. I'd made that singular post letting the public know that I was no longer with them. And then we noticed that we started to be attacked from behind the scenes um, ruthlessly by retailers and uh, supporters of the company. And um, what we found out was that Dixie Bell was dropping little cookies about information that was completely false, saying things like I was selling my paint illegally. The paint that I had was part of my uh, compensation structure. I owned it. I had done the work. It was mine to keep. I was able to do with it as I pleased, but they were telling people that it was illegal for me to sell it, 
which was untrue. They told people we were trying to be paid illegally, which was also untrue, but people were taking this information and using it to formulate attacks against the brand ambassadors that had left behind the scenes. At that time, three brand ambassadors had left. Um, after that, those attacks went on for months, about two months before um, Kristana and I decided to make a video and put that out on our YouTube channel explaining what had happened up to that point. And that was to combat some of the rumors that were coming out, out in those attacks and um, and combat some of those all out falsehoods that were being spread behind the scenes. Uh, the rumors, in fact, were far worse than the truth. And that was our effort to put the truth out there so that those attacks would stop. Um, after that, about two months later, so we're in April of 2022, I received information that my transfers would be uh, released to the public, uh, repackaged to remove my name to avoid compensating me. Um, in turn, I made a public post um, showing pictures of the repackaged transfers, letting the public know that I'd never been compensated for them and I did not support the purchase of those transfers. Um, as a result, Dixie Bell the next day made a public statement about my post. And in that, there were several inconsistencies that the public noticed um, and they were commenting on the post. So Dixie Bell was removing any public comments that were not in overwhelming support of them. Uh, the following day after that, uh, Dixie Bell released a mold that was an exact copy of a redesign with Prima mold. So a trademarked redesign with Prima design. Um, and as a result, they were forced to remove that from the market. The following day, they made yet another public statement. Um, in that statement, the public also noticed several inconsistencies and things they didn't like. So they were commenting on the post. Dixie Bell took the video down, put it back up so it wouldn't have comments. The public proceeded to comment on it. They took the video down again, put it back up. Um, and this time they started deleting any comments on the thread that were negative to them, um, but leaving up comments that were negative to us, which made it a public bashing session of the brand ambassadors. As a result, people took comments off of that thread and put them out on other social media channels, including my home address and photos of my children, which forced me to have to file a police report to have those removed. Um, after that, things went pretty quiet until um, about October of 2022, um, when Dixie Bell proceeded to release yet another one of my transfer designs. So at that point, I'd been gone almost a year and they released yet another one of my transfer designs. Um, I did go public and make a post to let people know that I didn't support the release of that transfer design and I hadn't been compensated for that one either. So at that point, I had made four, just four public posts over the course of a year, and all of them were to address um, attacks towards me or actions on the part of Dixie Bell Paint. Um, since then, I've been fairly quiet up until I saw the video come out from Cassidy with Undead Hardware. Cassidy's story had so many similarities with mine, um, from their disregard of their contract with her to trying to cut her out of the transaction and manufacture her hardware without compensating her, um, reminded me of them not compensating me for the work that I had also done. And then their threats to, uh, to her to remove her post from social media and their call to me to remove my post from social media. It was all very, very similar, the behaviors that I noticed in that. Um, when I initially made this decision to leave Dixie Bell, um, I hoped that it would improve things for my team behind the scenes, and I let them know that. Um, some brand ambassadors chose to stay and see if they would improve things, and um, that resulted in minimal compensation to them for those transfers between $20 and $30 um, a person. And instead of making improvements behind the scenes, they in fact imposed really restrictive um, contract text that just imposed penalties on the artists. And one of those is a, um, is a contract term that restricts anyone from saying anything negative about them publicly for a period up to 12 months after the termination of their contract with a penalty up to $10,000. Um, that's just one contract term that they imposed that was incredibly restrictive. Um, and um, so things didn't get better for the artists, they in fact got worse. So. Um, when I noticed that post from Cassidy, I felt really compelled to come out and speak again about what had happened to me because not only did it not improve things like I had hoped, but it in fact made things worse for the artist. So 
My hope with telling my story in this video is that people will come out and speak about this stuff so that we can say this is not something we want as a component of this industry. Um, this is a paint industry that we all have to exist in, and I don't want this to ever be something that another artist has to deal with. I've been accused of being greedy and horrible accusations. I can tell you that I took my business to the ground floor and lost my entire source of income to be able to come out and speak. I declined when they tried to bribe me into taking down a public post. Um, my sole goal has been to make people aware of what's going on and to tell the truth through this entire transaction because it has been so incredibly difficult for people. Um, I hope that you guys will go and give Cassidy all your support, watch her video, see her story, and then I hope this will encourage you and empower you to come out and tell your story if you've been affected negatively by this company too, so that we can um, join together and hopefully um, as a collective effort say enough is enough and this is not something that we want as a component of our industry. Um, you guys, I want to say thank you to everybody who's sent words of support and all the encouragement that we have received. It's incredibly hard to speak out. Silence is much easier. And so please um, know that your support has been incredibly valuable. It got me through a very difficult time, and I hope that it will get Cassidy through her difficult time as well. Um, I look forward to hearing your stories, and thank you guys again so much.